Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are reviewing Rosewood Amour from Banana Republic. Now this fragrance is something that I was surprised and not surprised by. I know that there are so many fragrances as I smack its bottom <laughs> that resemble the composition of Baccarat Rouge. And I've talked about how I don't like doing fragrances that are clones or counterfeits or dupes or things like that unless I am very well versed on the scent. And as a lover and collector of Baccarat Rouge, I have like the candles, the body oils, the fragrance, hair mist. Man, if they come out with a, a scented laundry detergent, because I do love MFK's laundry detergents. I would, I have bought it, continue to buy it. I would, I would get it. Um, I, I am so well versed in that fragrance and I love sharing my thoughts on fragrances that are similar to that composition because that's a very expensive fragrance. So Banana Republic released this little guy right here. This is Rosewood Amour for 3.4 ounces. It's about $94, so much cheaper than Baccarat Rouge. It is very similar in composition, but not identical. And if you had things about Baccarat Rouge that you did not like, this might be great to check out. So Let's get into the video. And foremost, the most important thing is this was sent to me for free to review. As always, I will be transparent. When things were sent to me for free, when I purchased it, when it was a gift, a swap, this was given to me. I do have a coupon code below. That is also an affiliate code. I do get a kit back. Feel free to ignore that if you are so inclined. That coupon code is good for most things on that website. Not all things. I forget exactly what fragrances are not included, but that uh, So Avant-Garde has a lot, and I mean a lot of amazing fragrances. You'll probably be able to find some things. So I'm just being transparent with where I got this bottle, coupon code, and the like. However, I am a huge fan of Banana Republic fragrances, and I think within the past few years, they've really been making a name for themselves as a powerhouse of a designer fragrance just brand. And I love their clothes, actually. I can't really wear their clothes. They're a little bit too classic looking for me. Not that I don't like them. It's just my body type looks kind of, it looks a little alien. I look, I feel better in uh, dinosaur onesies <laughs> than classic beautiful clothing. I like banana purple clothing. It just looks weird on my body. It doesn't look like I'm me. It looks like somebody cosplaying as me. Anyway, the fragrances are gorgeous. Now, Rosewood Amour. This fragrance is definitely very reminiscent of of Baccarat Rouge. The Eau de Parfum, not the extra. Now I've talked about the difference. The difference is if I have any related videos, I'll link them below. My other Banana Republic reviews, uh, Baccarat reviews, other Baccarat fragrances that might be interesting. Um, other uh, similar ones if you're trying to find something that's not like $500. Definitely check out below. But, my big old butt, the biggest thing is that between the extract and the Eau de Parfum is how the sweetness smells. So in the Eau de Parfum, you have more of this crystallized candy floss sweetness. It's more warm. And with the bitter almond in the Eau de Parfum, um, oh, in the extract, there we go, in the extract, you're getting more of a molten, molten caramel sweetness. Um, and the Eau de Parfum is, in my opinion, stronger, louder, more of a sillage, and the extrait is more intimate. Not that it is intimate, but it doesn't have the, the blasting power, the loudness of the Eau de Parfum. Now, the biggest, most well-recognized, in my opinion, in my uneducated opinion, uh, dupe clone of, uh, uh, Baccarat Rouge is Ariana Grande's cloud and I used to work at Ulta and I would get these men come in and they would buy and they would try to be ashamed of this and I'm like why are you ashamed of this wear it with pride uh, they would buy cloud because they wanted to smell like Baccarat Rouge because that is a fragrance that I find to be very sexy I love that scent and I think cloud is excellent and they didn't want to spend and rightfully so four to $600 on a bottle of perfume. Now I own them, I have bought them, I love them, but I do not think that there's anything wrong with people not wanting to spend that much money on 
fragrance. So if you like uh, Cloud, by all means. Now, what I like about this is going to be the way it differs from all of those fragrances, but there is gonna be some things about this that people might not like. So first is, this is going to have raspberry in it. There's also going to be jasmine, cedarwood, and brox and pink sugar, wild orchid. So the first thing is, is that this is an ambroxan bomb. So if you don't like ambroxan bombs, this, this isn't the fragrance for you. It's very strong in ambroxan. This isn't the most ambroxan -y of the ambroxan bombs of this style of composition of perfume. So if you find that some of the other fragrances that are reminiscent, um, you want a little less ambroxan, this is great. Now, the one thing that I thought this was going to be, and it wasn't, was when I saw the raspberry, I thought this was going to be an almost spitting image of Burberry Her. Because the raspberry note I thought was going to pull as a Baccarat Rouge with berry notes. And I do love Burberry Her, and that was actually another MFK fragrance. And the raspberry in this is really, at least on my skin, only in the opening, oh, first 30 seconds. And it's not kind of like a juicy, fruity raspberry. It's more of like a tart brightness. It's more of just something that helps the opening razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle, there we go, raspberries, um, rather than anything else. It has a bit of a fruitiness in the background that kind of pairs with the orchid, but it's really not up front and center compared to everything else. Now the sweetness in here is on equal par with the ambroxan. And for some people, for some people, that can be too much. So again, if you don't like ultra sweet fragrances, especially warm candy floss, cotton candy level sweetnesses, I'm not saying this smells like cotton candy, I'm saying that the sweetness is reminiscent of the sweetness in cotton candy, not like a molten caramelly, um, syrupy sweetness in a fragrance, more of a crystalline um, sweetness, not a frosting sweetness, not a marshmallow sweetness. It smells more of sugar and less of like frosting, so to speak. And with the Ambroxan, it is very powerful. It is very sexy. It is very take charge, but it is very, very powerful. It can overtake you, especially if you do not like Ambroxan. So again, it is on equal par with the Ambroxan. So if super sweet fragrances and super Ambroxy fragrances are not your cup of tea, do not. This is not the fragrance for you. However, what I do like about this is that because the sweetness is equal with the Ambroxan, compared to other fragrances that share this composition, I find that to make it a little bit more elevated. So sometimes I love the smell of Ambroxan. I love the way it smells on the skin. I think it's very sexy. I think it's very powerful. Sometimes it can smell a little cheap. I'll be honest, sometimes it can smell a little cheap if it's not balanced correctly. And when it's balanced correctly, I think that that added oomph that it has just accentuates a lot of sexiness, a lot of confidence, and a lot of attractiveness. And I think that in this fragrance, it does so in a really gorgeous way without being as crazy overpowering as most standard Ambroxan bomb fragrances can be, and that's because of the sugar. The sugar, in my opinion, is less of a overpowering sweetness as like the perfect amount of salt around a perfect margarita. It's just adding to something that gives it another layer of depth, a little bit more oomph, something extra. Um, now, as somebody who loves margaritas, Sometimes the salt, if it's not the right amount or not the right salt or the sour mix is incorrect, it doesn't taste right. And you're just like, why am I drinking this? But sometimes there's the right salt with the right margarita and the right sour mix. And you're like, this is dang good. And that's the blend of this. So before in other videos, I always like to compare blended fragrances. If this is well blended, well crafted, what are you expecting 
for the price. If I'm sitting here saying that this smells similar to Baccarat Rouge, this is smell similar to Cloud, I don't think that I have to sit here and break down the notes and say, this is an Ambroxan Sweet Balm that smells kind of like Cloud. I think most of you guys will understand what this smells like. Instead, I think I should explain where this fits, not amongst Baccarat Rouge fragrances, or fragrances that are reminiscent of Baccarat Rouge, but how this is blended and crafted in comparison to other Banana Republic fragrances. Because with their Icon collection, in my opinion, those really elevated the game. Those fragrances are fantastic. I love uh, Peppercorn, Peony and Peppercorn, I know I say that, Flower Ronk, uh, Dark Cherry, and Amber is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the, uh, what is it, the Platinum, Vintage Platinum, there's like, a, I forget the name of it, is really good. The Neroli one is good. I cannot, they have so many. I cannot remember all the names. They are excellent. I love them. You can find them at Sauvignon Avant Garde and you can find them cheaply. A variety of other places too. Great fragrances. So in comparing this fragrance, rather than comparing it to Cloud, comparing it to Ula Rouge from Christian Seriana, which is another great fragrance. I wanted to compare this to other Banana Republic scents, specifically Banana Republic scents that are targeted and marketed to women. Because even though anyone can wear whatever you want, you can fragrance is genderless. This is marketed to women. So when I'm looking at reviewing a fragrance, I like to be a little bit um, fair with the review. And so we're going to review this with Banana Republic fragrances, and we're going to review this also against other designer fragrances around this price point. So say Marc Jacobs and Versace fragrances. I think that that's a fair price point to review this at. And when I talk about it being well blended, well crafted, I like to use pastries as a great example. So you have pastries, you're not just paying for the ingredients, you're paying for the expertise of the baker. The difference would be like a croissant. Uh, you can buy like a dozen croissants for $4 from some places, or you can go to a very good French bakery and buy one croissant for $6. Uh, two vastly different experiences, but a lot of people would enjoy eating either. I enjoy a really expensive croissant and I could eat bags of really cheap croissants, but I know what I'm getting when I decide to purchase an expensive croissant. If I spend $6 on, on one croissant, it better taste like a $6 croissant. And if I, if this like 12, 12 croissants for $3, I know, I know what I'm getting. So what are you getting with this? Is it worth the full retail price point of $94 for 3.4 ounces? And that's going to have to do with how it's blended, how it's crafted, and how it compares to other fragrances, uh, designer fragrances within this price point, and other Banana Republic fragrances. And I have to say that I am actually very impressed with how this smells, and it has to do with how the Ambroxan is balanced. Now, one thing that I've noticed with Banana Republic is their ability to really not take themselves too seriously when they create these designer fragrances, but at the same time, creating a quality experience that, in my opinion, isn't overpriced for what they're offering. Some fragrance houses that are designers will have these like $80 bottles of perfume, $90 bottles of perfume, and they will smell like body mist that you can get at Bath and Body Works. And do not get me wrong, those smell amazing, but you can go to Bath and Body Works and get three of them for 20 bucks and they will last longer and sometimes smell even better than spending $90 on a bottle of perfume. So that's what I'm talking about is sometimes some of these fragrances, they don't smell like you're getting an elevated experience for a designer scent. But still at the same time, designer scents should be to some degree mainstream and crowd pleasing. That doesn't mean that they're cheap. That doesn't mean that they're bad fragrances, but there should be a palatable type of composition that doesn't smell off putting. And I like to equate that to spiciness. You know, if I go to a restaurant and I see a, spy, a hot sauce on the table, I don't think that's gonna be like a hot chip level of spiciness. It's gonna be like, Sriracha or Franks or Crystal or something. It's going to be a familiar level of spice. And that's what I mean by crowd pleasing and mainstream in regards to designer sense. It's going to be a familiar 
type of scent that if you smell it, you're not going to be like, this is something niche and conceptual. It's going to be something that in the most common denominator is going to smell really good and is going to work well in a variety of different instances. Generally, uh, it's going to smell good for dates. It's not going to smell in a way that's going to make you feel like you didn't shower or you should immediately shower after wearing this fragrance. There's something about it that might be a little different and daring, but not challenging and unfamiliar. And I think Banana Republic has been killing it when it comes down to creating scents like that. Nothing groundbreaking, but I don't expect groundbreaking from, I would say, I don't want to say mid-tier in regards to quality, but like mid-tier when it comes to price point designer houses, especially designer houses that are just kind of establishing themselves as carrying fragrances. And although Banana Republic has been creating fragrances for a minute, they've really kind of been making themselves a little bit more well known with specifically with their icon collection, in my opinion. So I don't expect them to try to be pushing boundaries with scents. I expect them to be creating fragrances similar to their clothing, something classic, something beautiful, something just about anybody can wear. And Rosewood Amour is a great version of the style of those scents. So the Ambroxan and the Sugar are really what makes this successful is because they're balanced. So when you get a fragrance that's reminiscent of the Rouge, the 54, 540 Rouge Red, you, you, need, you need that level of sweetness and warmth in Ambrox. You need it. It is distinctive. That's what makes people love it and that's what made people sick and tired of smelling it. So whether or not this was designed to be a fragrance that was identical to that, it smells similar to those compositions. But I would say this isn't a Baccarat Rouge clone or dupe. I would say that this is a scent reminiscent of the more popular fragrances that are popular for smelling like Baccarat Rouge. So like Burberry, Her, or Cloud, or Christian Seriano's Ula Rouge or Le Apres Le Amour from Thomas Cosmo. I think I mispronounced everything horribly wrong. Those fragrances are very well known, very distinctive, and very good at smelling like this. Sunset Right from All Saints is another really, really good one. But what I like about this is that the sugar is taming the Ambroxan without making it dumbed down and without dimming that kind of really sexy loudness. So again, it's complementing it in a very nice kind of different way. Again, like a nice salt on a margarita, the proper salt on the right margarita. And then the sour mix is like everything else. If you ever have one of those like cheap sour mixes from like one of those like chain restaurants and you drink it and it just tastes rancid. Um, it doesn't mean that cheap sour mix is, is bad but some brands, it doesn't pair nicely with all the, it just doesn't work. And with this, it's not like that. Everything is working together nicely. The orchid is giving it a nice sexy floralness. The jasmine's a little bit more aromatic. It gives it almost a gingery spiciness. You've got the beautiful woods at the base, but you're really just, it's just playing off the sweetness from the sugar and the Ambroxan, and again at the opening, you get a little tiny bit of that raspberry. It's just very, very nice, very, very sexy, and a very fantastically complimentary scent, especially if people are looking for this. It's a little bit more of an elegant and mature, elevated version of Cloud. I would say it's more of a Cloud dupe than a Baccarat Rouge dupe, if that makes any sense, and a little bit more of a tame version of Le Apres de Amour from Thomas Cosmala. That one's a little bit too loud and proud, too ambroxony for you. And you want something that's a little bit more sweet, a little bit more elegant, a little bit more demure, but still has that sexiness to it. This is fantastic. And that's where I think this one really shines. 
So compared to fragrances from say Marc Jacobs and Versace, I would say that this definitely smells like the quality that you would find in the price point of designer fragrances, say between like 70 to $100 for a 1.7 to 3.4 mil. So you're not going to be overpaying full retail price for the quality of the composition of this fragrance. But also I would say that I like how it's a little bit more balanced than other fragrances that are just loaded up on umbroxins and sugars and fruits. It feels like there was a little bit more thought in how everything was put together and how it plays on the skin. It's not as loud as some of these other fragrances are, but the loudest parts of this are more of the florals with the umbroxin and then the closer you get to the skin, you get a little bit more of the sweetness. So I do like how this plays on the skin in regards to performance. Um, with projection and sillage and longevity on this is pretty good. I get about six to eight hours of wear. So overall, Rosewood Amour from Rapana Republic, Banana Republic, is in my opinion, a very successful fragrance. Is it groundbreaking? No. Is it new? No. Have you smelled it before? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, a lot of people have issues with fragrances that are heavy on Ambrox and heavy on sugar uh, are uh, the red 360 type of fragrances. They like it, but there's something about it that's jarring, headache, headache inducing and cloying. And the nice thing about this is it's a little bit more balanced. It's a little bit more elegant. It's a little bit more elevated, but it still has that pungent sexiness that people expect. So if you like those styles of fragrances and you wanted to try something a little bit different, a Rosewood Amour from Banana Republic is great and it won't break the bank. So that is my thoughts on this scent from Banana Republic. But do keep in mind, this was sent to me for free to review. And I am a huge fan of these styles of fragrances. So generally, I am more biased to fragrances that smell like that because I generally just really love them anyway. So take with that what you will. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.